I was camped in a rather worn campground with a broken shelter at the dawn of my last day on trail, right next to the 15 km distance marker. The forecast said an absolutely ridiculous amount of rain starting at 10. Oh, good morning. It's five in the morning. Rain just stopped again. It's been raining not enough all night, so forecast clearly wrong again. In some ways, that means that I'm not in such a hurry, but I'm gonna get up and go. All right. So I moved over to the shelter, put all the stuff, my stuff, all over here while I was packing up. Packed away the media mod for the GoPro. GoPro packed away uh, all my batteries because they're all dead except the one in here, which is now it's 57% or something like that. So that's what we got for today. I've also had this uh, breakfast package thing soaking while I tore down the drummer, so that's nice and ready to go. So I'm just gonna eat. I am gonna ibuprofen up, which is something I don't normally like to do. I also need to tape up one of my heels even more and then we're just gonna get going it is now 5.52 so yeah it takes me about an hour to break camp in the morning um yeah my gopro just powered itself off it's got 56 percent battery so uh, but okay i'm gonna stop here um we'll see you on the trail all right Oh, I almost forgot to start my GPS watch. But it's <clears throat> 6.25, nothing left, everything cleaned up, except the fork, but that was somebody else's. It was here when I came here, nothing remaining over there. So we're ready to go. To go. Uh, I have put, oh, my poor feet. I have put what remains of my water into my camel pack. Everything is there now, and now it's all about making distance. And we're starting with about a hundred meter climb, so it'll be fun. Um, I uh, am wearing a red rain jacket already. It's been raining on and off all day, all morning, even though it shouldn't. Don't trust the forecasts in this place, people. Coming up on two kilometers down for the day. Started raining again, and the thunder just keeps going. Seems to be a little bit in the distance though, and I'm right next to a pretty tall mountain, so no worries there. Not too bad this far. Everything is soaked though, and the only thing about that that I'm a little worried about is how my blisters are gonna do if my feet end up getting entirely soaked. Definitely not there yet though, but the risk. Oh, keep on trucking. Oh, pretty. Even in the rain. Yeah, it's just solid raining now. And it's, what, seven something? Seven, ten. So, three, in, in three hours it's supposed to start raining. Yep. The rain kept on increasing in intensity, but the trail soon turned into a road walk, allowing me to keep good pace. Alright, GoPro is being messy. Think maybe it doesn't like the temperature. Road walk, heck yeah. You know what? <laughs> it's really pouring down now. I am so happy that I didn't uh, have to do that bouldery section I did yesterday, today. Because that would have sucked. It sucked bad enough with dry rocks. Yeah, it looks like I won't be able to do much filming today. Wow. The roadwalk brought me to the small settlement of Lövik and its marina where there was a self-service guest house where I could stop and use the bathroom. My rain jacket was doing a great job, but my hiking pants aren't waterproof. Their water resistance was no match for a downpour of this magnitude, 
and my lower body was absolutely soaked through. I stood for a moment on the porch of the guest house looking out over the water. It was raining so hard that visibility was next to nothing at this point. I had completed 5 kilometers for the day in just over an hour, and now it was time for my last section of the hike, 9.8 kilometers in the pouring rain, difficulty demanding, estimated to take 5 to 6 hours of hiking. If this section had anything like the boulder field from yesterday, this could get real bad. Okay, pretty quickly turned off from the road, and uh, according to the elevation map, there's a 100 meter climb now, then back down, then like a 70 meter climb, and then back down, and then home stretch. Okay, how oh, it would be fun. Uh, the trail is a muddy mess. Uh, excuse the thunder. Uh. My GoPro was refusing to record more than 10 seconds at a time here, but what I was saying was that since the trail was pretty overgrown, my legs scraped along all the vegetation along the sides, picking up all the water from them and helpfully funneling all of it down into my shoes. Other than that, the trail was not all that bad. starting to get closer to the top of that first climb <laughs> and the only reason this is okay at all it's not too bad actually it's pretty cozy but the only reason it's okay is that I have a car waiting yep that's the trail pools of water and slippery rocks done with the climb I don't like this I think I should shelter here Okay. Something was off though. I was missing a distance marker, and when I finally hit the next one, it said 9, not 8. Thinking back, I realized that the 10 kilometer marker was also inside a section supposedly 9.8 kilometers long, which doesn't make sense. I think they might have snuck in a bonus kilometer on this section, and it's now raining so heavily that there's no view anywhere. And I really want to get off this mountain. So not only had the forecast been entirely off, and I was hiking the entire way through an absolute downpour, the trail was missigned from the 10 kilometer mark, and the first section was actually 10.8 kilometers, not 9.8. That's not what I needed at all, and with the last few climbs and other following the scent, both my knees were now hurting significantly. I tried to keep my spirit high and kept pushing. At this point I really didn't have much in the way of options. That doesn't look too easy. Ugh. Nice view though. Or would have been. Only mm -hmm. reach the second climb. I am saturated. Still no ten, by the way. Embrace the suck. <sighs> hey. I walked a trail that looked more like a stream than a trail, which then turned into a boardwalk, then back to a trail for the last big descent. At this point I was in a fair bit of pain, and also starting to get rather cold from the constant soaking rain. By the time 10 o'clock rolled around, I had done 11 and a half kilometers. If everything had gone to plan, I would only have had to hike 3.5 kilometers in the rain. Instead, I had hiked all of it in the rain and now had 4.5 kilometers to go. 
the trail turned gravel road, which normally I would have appreciated because it meant I could keep my pace up. But at this point, my soaked feet were hurting from a long and hard hike already, and I still could not take any break because there was simply no mercy from the weather. The gravel soon became tarmac, and a long bridge appeared in the distance, a huge arch that I would have to climb. Every step brought a new jolt of pain through my feet, and yet I kept going because there was no alternative. The bridge, of course, also meant I was entirely exposed to a harsh wind driving the rain into my side. The only small ray of hope was that the High Coast Bridge was now visible in the distance, the end goal of my journey. It been a nice view any other day. Oh, the horror. It's the only place I'm not actively being rained on is under the freeway. Oh. For several kilometers I forced myself to take step after painful step along the tarmac, until finally the last kilometer turned into a forest trail started the final climb. Then a gravel road, and finally a scramble up a slope of exposed rock to the parking lot. It seems weird now to not be able to share these last moments with you. Despite having more than 50% battery left, the GoPro was now entirely refusing to turn on at all, so I have no footage of the last kilometer. You'd think I'd feel a sense of triumph over having completed what I'd set out to do. But this last section can only be described as pure misery, and I felt pretty empty inside as I walked up the parking lot, dropped my pack, and dug out my car keys. My only emotion, a hint of relief. I had completed this last section in less than four hours. I changed into as much as I could of my dry camp clothes, but was still pretty soaked. With my car heater set to 28 degrees, the journey home began. In hindsight, it's obvious that I wasn't in shape to do what I did, and that I pushed myself far beyond a comfortable limit. I learned a lot, and despite all the pain and effort involved, there's a simplicity in waking up every day with an obvious goal, and only physical effort separating you from overcoming the obstacles in front of you, that I long back to. I am happy I threw hike the trail, but now I really need to get myself in better shape before I attempt anything like that again. Thank you for joining me in my journey. I hope you've enjoyed it and found some inspiration to find your own adventure.